Hey everyone, Kevin here with Divinely Design, and I have another mixed media photo layout today. This one's called Fabulous Family, and it features a picture of me, my mom, and my dad um, a couple of years ago around Christmas time. Um, it kind of had an orange kind of tint to it. Um, that That's just the way the picture came out, so I let that sort of guide my color choices for the page here. I'm starting off with some 12 by 12 pattern paper. This was a stamping up one. Um, and I'm actually gonna layer this pattern paper on a solid, um, just orange piece of paper. And um, just using some Liquitex matte um, medium there. And um, just uh, making sure I sort of layer it down. You can see I kind of distressed the edges and tore some holes in it. This is a piece of pattern paper from a pattern, a 12 by 12 pattern pack that just has sort of type type written in it. And again, I'm distressing it and trying to sort of just um, create some tears in it so that you can see through to both the pattern paper and the solid orange paper below. And uh, I'll distress the edges as well. I then use some distress ink um, around the edges just to uh, darken them up a little bit. Um, I think I used uh, spiced marmalade maybe for the edges. Um, um, here just using some uh, heavy gesso and I wanted to lighten it up a little bit or, or add some dimension to it so there were some parts that were orange and some that were um, a lot um, you know more covered up. Not covering it up completely just sort of toning down the orange color of it a little bit. Uh, just dressing the edges here. Um, trying to get the tears to just to give them some definition. And then I'm going to put this down on again with some more Liquitex uh, matte medium here. So using three pieces of paper, one thing that happened was there was a lot of liquid kind of in those three pieces. I mean, I wetted that top one to be able to form it. And then the Liquitex and gesso, and it just ended up being a lot of liquid on it. So... Um, I, I actually walked away at one point after I sort of get it, I started using sprays on it, which added more water to it. So I, I let it go for a little while later on so it would just dry out some more. But it, it became a little bit hard to dry uh, just because I think there was so much moisture on the papers. Covered it up with some clear gesso just because I want to use some gelatos. So using gelatos in kind of the yellow and orange family uh, and then spraying it with just some water and using my fingers to... Um, to, to give some shading to that uh, pattern paper there. Uh, and again, just trying to dry things out. I kept coming back and trying to make sure the tears in the page kind of remained open. As I add more stuff, they sort of closed up a little bit, but. Just checking placement here. I'm gonna use some um, Blue Fern Studios chipboards eventually, and I was just checking for placement. This is some um, Prima, um, modeling paste and a Martha Stewart uh, stencil here just putting that down and um, then drying it off uh, with a heat gun and then I'll come in uh, eventually with um, some sprays a combination of sprays and I just sort of grabbed them in the yellow orange red family so there were some delusions there were some Lindy stamp gangs there was some Heidi swap uh, in there and I just sort of sprayed them on until I, I kind of got the look that I look I was going for. Tried to keep them kind of around the embossed areas there, those those embossed stencils sprayed on a lot and then just raised the paper to allow them drip to drip down. Um, but then eventually I kind of came in and added some sprays kind of all over. This is a whimsy uh, a whimsy stamp uh, pack here. Um, I forget what exactly it's called, but it's it has like different sort of grunge elements. It's got sort of paint splatters and, and wires and um, just some lines and things like that. So I just added some stamps to do some um, interest to the back. Now I'm sort of adding the sprays kind of all over and just letting them drip in various ways. And again, kind of keeping it in the, you know, orange yellow family. Um, I dried these. I dried this top spray off kind of as much as I could, because uh, I wanted to come back in. I think with a few more 
um, sprays, but I wanted to do them in, in kind of splattered on. Um, so when you do that, I find it works much better if you can dry, you know, dry them first and then come back and do your splatters and then dry the splatters. So adding some whites and some pinks and some reds. Um, eventually here, after I get these sort of, um, this is sort of when I, I sprayed it with some varnish, polyurethane, and then just let it sit for a couple hours. And then eventually I came back. Here I'm matting down the pitcher, and since I have most of my colors in the orange family, I wanted to make sure my pitcher still remained a focal point, so I matted it out with some blue to contrast with the orange, and then just put a piece of black behind it. Here I'm adding some embossing paste, uh, I'm sorry, embossing powder to some Blue Fern Studio chipboard elements. This is a Recollections bright yellow um, embossing paste, and I, I did it twice. I embossed it, and then came back, used my Versamark, and put more powder on, and then embossed it again. And I find that doing it sort of twice makes it a big difference. It makes it go from sort of slightly splotchy looking to just very, very nicely embossed. It looks like almost like a, it's, you know, it's almost like plastic. It's It just looks much better. Just putting down my photo here. Um, using some of that three-in-one glue to put some elements on here, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm still sort of on the fence about the three-in-one glue. It's good for some things, and then sometimes it irritates me. These are some EK Success felt pads, and these are kind of in the bright colors. And then I used a whole bunch of just flower punches. That one punch I actually couldn't use. It couldn't go through the, the felt, but used a couple of stamps or punches here to punch out some floral shapes. And then just sort of combined them, you know, layered them together. Some are single layers, some have two, some have three. Um, to make some various, like, very bright um, yellow, orange, and pink flowers. And just arranging them kind of mostly in that one bottom corner. Um, again, kind of keeping the visual line from the uh, upper left to the bottom right um, was sort of you know, kind of where I'm trying to draw the eye. Um, so I kept the brightness mostly in that bottom right, but kind of put that big pink one, um, which I took an ink blending tool and sort of sponged the edges with for a little bit more definition. And I put that big pink one in the upper left corner there. Just adding some more of those just to sort of fill out the form um, and give it... Um, a nice shape there below the the friendly chipboard piece. I was going to add some string because I have this string that's in this it's very bright pink and orange. And so you see me playing with it here and I ended up not liking it and I just took it out. It just wasn't working for me. I wanted to add some textural elements here around the picture and I probably should have not put the picture down and should have done some of my textured laying first. But I have a couple of different little elements. That was a metal piece that I kind of stuck on the top there. That's a, some fiber paste that I had from a different project that I sponged with some spiced marmalade and um, then used that as a textural element. I have some bits of papyrus and some kind of open weave, um, like a raffia or like a natural ribbon. And uh, just sort of adding them in here, kind of tucking them behind the picture, gluing them in place. Um, I have some resin elements from Prima and the metal key is from Tim Holtz, I believe. And um, again, just sort of using that three in one glue to sort of put everything down. And I still wanted more. So then I wasn't originally going to put any more flowers on, just keep those. But I felt like the middle needed more fullness. So I didn't want to make more of the yellow and orange flowers. So I took some other paper flowers that I have that are kind of more neutral. There's a there's a little pink and yellow kind of in the upper top there. But um, I tried to keep it more neutral, but I like the fullness that that brought to the, the page itself. And then I still kind of felt like it needed just a tiny little bit more for some reason. So I put a couple of um, sequins on and just and kept them in the gold, orange, and a little bit of pink in there as well. So 
Um, this is some Prima glass glitter, and it's the, the last element I think I'm adding here. This is in copper, and I'm putting down some uh, Prima paste, some modeling paste, and then just adding the glass glitter on top and then kind of dumping it off. But it does add a nice sparkle element to it. So that's the finished page there, and I have a couple of uh, close-up pictures here on some of the elements. Um, I hope you enjoyed this mixed media presentation. If you did, click on that thumbs up. Um, and if you like soap and mixed media and card making and paper crafts and all kinds of crafty things, and you're not subscribed, click on that uh, subscribe button here. Check back um, here at Divinely Designed for more uh, crafty and soapy videos. Thanks everybody for watching and um, have a great day everyone.